how uh, it's timely that we invite our two chefs. Can I ask uh, Chef City and uh, Chef Bob, when, uh, he's up there, to come out on stage and I would like each of them to share about 10 minutes of their life journey, um, relevance to our Islam. And then after that, again, we'll open the floor for uh, any questions and answers. So we could Chef City and Chef Bob, please come up, please. Which one of you would like to go first? Do you to let the ladies go first? Wasn't quite positive, 
because when I was shopping for uh, uh, Tudong, they asked me, Oh, your chef city, right? He says, yeah. Uh, belikan untuk siapa? For your mom? For, for your sister? I say, no, for myself. The first thing they say, Oh my God, no, your hair is so gorgeous. So, <laughs> mashallah. So, um, it works both ways. On one hand, I feel complimented. But on the other hand, I feel so sinful. Because people remember me for my hair. People remember me for that, that long flowing hair. And my trademark, my trademark, which is my flower. And some of them went on to say this. So what's going to happen to the flowers that you have on your hair? Because I've got lots of it. I've got lots of those huge flowers. And there was a company who told me this. Perhaps I could convert that into a headscarf for you. And I said, MashaAllah, na'uzubillah min zalik. My main purpose of putting on is to divert people's attention to my hair. Not to draw attention to it. Because if I take the flowers, I jadikan ke atas my scarf. <laughs> it's as good as me not wearing. Because people are attracted to that. I used to come into a hall full of people during uh, Hari Raya once. And they were all waving to me. I, I wasn't wearing hijab back then. They were all waving to me and they said, Look, Chef Siti, we follow you. It's a flower. You know, they said that. So, uh, again, I feel so sinful now. MashaAllah, may Allah forgive me. Um, uh, so what I tried to do, I said, okay, since if I have that ability to so-called uh, lead people, why not I do something good about it? So I decided um, to do my own dakwah in my own way. Uh, but unfortunately, before I even began, I was gunned down, gunned down in the sense that uh, uh, some souls were, were I mean, they mean well, they mean very well. And this is where I, I like to appeal to people out there. Um, please be kind to a Muslim who's trying to make a move. Uh, you may be saying, Oh, the 50 years old, masih belum nak berhijab, this and that. Yeah, but different people have the calling at different times. Uh, sometimes the person who's got the calling at 50 years old may do it even better than those who have been doing it all these years. Th that's my personal stand on this. So, there was a time when um, uh, I uploaded a picture of me. There was a promotion going on. I uploaded a picture that was two years ago. And somebody didn't know that. And somebody made a remark. She says, ah, look at this fashion tabaru. Sekarang pakai, besok buka. So, they thought, I put on, and next few days, I took out. You see, people are very judgmental. Just because you're a celebrity, just because that, they're very judgmental. Every single step that you do is very, is, is really being scrutinized. So, um, that hurt me a lot because I baru nak jina. We're just taking baby steps to it, you know. So, I said, if this is how people are supportive of orang yang baru nak berhijab, no wonder, no wonder a lot of ladies out there, you know, what if people condemn them? What if this? What if that? So I decided to open a page. It's called Hijra to Hijab. It's called Hijra to Hijab HDH. That's my fan page. I decided to open a blog to, to say things which, how I feel about things, how, how I want people to see my journey. MashaAllah, I open it at 10.30 at night. The next day at noon, I had 2,000 followers. I said, wow, why are they following me? I'm not even saying anything. I've got nothing to, to contribute. Then I realized that Allah put me in this position for a reason. Because if I'm able to, to have this positive influence on people, why don't I use it positively? So through that page, Hijrah to Hijab, I invited people to tell me stories about their journey. And that is where I realized there are so many women out there who are really, really deprived of the support that they did. There was this girl, she said she's a hostess, okay? So she said that when she first put on her hijab, her husband was the one who laughed at her. Husband was the one who laughed at her. Husband said, no, are you for real? You know, he just like, biskut sekejap, ada sekejap tak ada. So I realised that, mashallah, there's a lot of stories out there that people, people, you know, and, and they, they, they thank me for opening that page. It gives them a 
platform and Alhamdulillah through that page I've managed to convert some non-hijabis to wearing the hijab. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. So it, it's my own da'wah. I, I, I didn't realize it but it's my own da'wah. And, and, and from there I realized that uh, we make a difference ladies. If, if, if you know of people who have not put on the hijab, um, your approach to them <coughs> may be slightly different. Be, be a little bit more gentler because not everybody may see it as, as you, you want to do it for them. They may, they may think you are just attacking them personally. So uh, in my case, when I put on, people say, are you sure this is career suicide? Because that's what people know me as. And you know, some of them, I even went on to say, they asked me this uh, through my Hijra to Hijab page, Chef Siti, can we just ask you personally, did you put on because your hair is falling apart? <laughs> did you put on because you're suffering? MashaAllah, I said, if it's anything, you should put on when you're at the most beautiful, because that's the time when there's a lot of chubaan, when you're at the prettiest, when you're at the most uh, uh, so-called uh, um, uh, influential, that's the part you should be putting on because that's when people look up to you. If, if she's a celebrity at, and that's, that's her trademark and she can cover it up, so it speaks volumes of what we should be doing. So this is just my personal stand. If, if it's anything, uh, uh, but it's a learning process. Today I learned a lot of things from Ustazah. Um, lots of things about bling bling also. Excuse me, forgive my bling bling. <laughs> yeah, every day is a learning process. Every day is a learning process. And I love the fact that she's not condemning it. She's just saying it as it is. And it's something new. It's something that I learned. Uh, back to the question about uh, drawing attention onto yourself. Yes, I fully agree. So I'm not one for those who would want to... to, to uh, 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 someone offered to style style me for my hijab. I said, well, you know, when you want to hijab, you're supposed to down, downplay yourself, not to style yourself up. So that's my personal stand. And I, I don't want that Allah will make it to uh, help me see through this. Because every day is a chubaan for me, every, every day. And inshallah, I hope I'm, I can use my celebrity platform to reach out to more people. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Chef Siti. In fact, I read a paper to state that uh, they, we should have some role models. And perhaps I should interview you <laughs> sooner. All right, uh, next to me is Chef Bob. I've known his mother a long time ago when I was a very young teacher. So I think we should also listen to um, Chef's journey as well. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh um, My journey through Hijrah is uh, an opposite uh, from uh, Chef Siti She has a timeline for, for her to, 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 to change you know? But as for me, uh, if every, everybody knows from my Facebook but Before this, I was very expletive you know? Uh, I don't care what I say, you know, I just put it on Facebook, I just don't care what other people say because um, to me, uh, this is my life, uh, this is my, my, my myself, I don't care what I, I uh, what's it called, put up over there, you know, and when I turn out this way, uh, a lot of people was uh, questioning me, it's like, Hey, um, are you sick? Do, 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 do you have a, a chronic sickness that, that you're gonna die soon? I said, <laughs> you know, kau doa tak mati, aja macam itu lah. My 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 opinion lah. But it's 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 a my change was gradual, you know. Um, from the day that I met Ustad, and thanks to Ustad's uh, cousin also, Said, um, she. Uh, Chef Siti has a friend who constantly remind her. I have a friend who constantly remind me of, hey, bila kau datang class, you know, when you want to come to class, hey, you alamak, you like this, when, 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 when do you want to change, you know, 
and I haven't had the chance to say thank you to Syed for you know reminding me last time. You know, when that time when he reminded me, I was like, hey, got any you know, in my my heart, like, hey, shut up, lah, you know, I know what I'm doing, like, this is my life, you know. Um, but for that, Allah knows that He has sent someone to 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 you know to trigger me to go to class, you know, and out of sudden one day I just come to class, you know, which was at a Sarang Cafe last time, a Sarang Cafe. And from there on, it's like, it's automatic, you know? um, Automatic, I come to class, you know. And from then on, I try to change myself. Allah wouldn't change you if you really want to change yourself, you know. So I change myself first, before um, I go towards the hijrah, you know. And uh, Alhamdulillah, with uh, Ustaz Saiz's guidance, you know, I went to uh, Umrah with my beautiful wife, you know. And that time she was uh, four months pregnant, and Alhamdulillah, it's a family holiday lah. Because it's not a holiday lah, eh? but <laughs> sorry lah. Um, so we, we we went there together. I I went there with my wife, and uh, it's, it's a it's a um, life changing experience lah. You know, during that time, and as you know that I have a I had a restaurant, you know, for seven years last time. And uh, when I was at Umrah in front of Kaaba, you know, uh, I doa, I doa that I want my restaurant to be successful. You know, I wanted, uh, if if possible, expand my 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 my, my restaurant. You know, uh, because um, I wanted that you know, duniawi lah, worldly matters lah. You know, like uh, who who doesn't like like who doesn't like like well, luxury, you know. No, not that luxury. That it's, it's, it's some sort of a comfortable life, you know. I know. Uh, in front of I really know. Uh, uh, please, you know, when I come back, please um, give my restaurant a good boost and everything. Uh. When I come back three to four months uh, after Umrah, Allah take away my restaurant. You know, He take away my only rice bowl that I have for my, my family and myself. You know, but. In turn, he gives me the gift, a uh, luxury of time with my wife and Alhamdulillah, my home, baby home, you know. What I realized from there is that I do have for what I want, but Allah gives me what I need, you know, which is uh, the, the gift of time. MashaAllah, uh, during that time uh, when I lost my restaurant, it was uh, during Ramadan. You know, Ramadan uh, just before Ramadan, I, I closed up my restaurant. And that was the best Ramadan I had. I said, right? Tola. No, no, no. Every day I uh, suffer with you, you know, and we solat jemaah together during Subo. You know, it was, it was magical, it was the best. I had no money inside my pocket, but it was the best Ramadan. Imagine that, you know. Um, so from there on, also I start to think that you know, Allah listen to us. You know, He listens to what we need, not what we want. Uh, I have encountered with this um, abang, which full of tattoos, full of tattoos. You know, but when he solat, he doa, he cried. I was like. Feel of hijrah was much more, you know, um, intense than I had to get go through. And you know, you you you, you don't judge by what, uh, how they, they, they are, you know, like um, with tattoos, with piercing. But sometimes they are the best of people. You know, they they, they are the um, they have more iman than we are. You know, so. From there on also, you know, I be less, less judge, judgeful, is it? What's the name? Uh, judgmental, yeah, well, <laughs> judgeful, yeah. more judgmental, you know, I'm more relaxed, betul lah. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, much more relaxed and um, Alhamdulillah, I was scared that time when I, I, I lost my restaurant, I have no source of income, but through the guidance of Ustaz, and to the to the um, to the ski of Allah, I do uh, and 
the, 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 the rezeki comes in from many different ways you know from from many different ways you you, you could imagine sometimes it's too much you get too much of rezeki you don't know where uh, how to, to to accept it so hijrah is a it's a form of uh, what's it called it um, journey towards uh, a better life lah, so to speak you know I feel more calm right now although my waistline is much more bigger <laughs> you know but I feel more calm you know there's a so, uh, feeling of calmness when you think about Allah you know Allah will boast your name through the angels to all the angels that's what I learned from Ustaz you know isn't that more, 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 more better than people will boast your name through other people you know that Allah will boast your name to all the angels. That's much more better. See? Um, so I, I feel that um, there's much more life than the dunya. And that's why I, I just think that dunya is so insignificant, you know? And just kerja kan akhirat. And it's a learning journey also. I, I'm, I'm also learning also. Everybody here is learning. And, uh, it's great that I have a good teacher, I have great friends, and a beautiful wife who really, um, uh, what's it called, Akalia with me, you know, <laughs> and go through this journey with me. So that's what I can uh, share with you. If you want to know more, you can ask more questions. How do I do the hijrah? So uh, after this, I just open to the question. Before that, I just like to thank you to Ustaz Sayyidah for, you know, Guiding me, lah, and my friends for you know guiding me also, and with that I conclude my story. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. I think you should give them a round of applause for sharing the message. Indeed, a friend in need is a friend indeed, and that friend will bring you to the steps of paradise. Now we have a few more minutes and if you would like to ask some questions to both our shelves or even to our two scholars, uh, please be free to ask questions. Okay, as uh, Chef will share a bit more. Um, I wanted to mention this just now, uh, taking on from what Chef Bob has said, I think for both of us, we both are running our own business. Um, the greatest challenge for business owners right now is to keep our prayers. We have lots of business opportunities, but we forgot sometimes that Allah is watching over us. He's just testing you. The more, the more successful you are, the more he's, he's testing you. Are you going to remember me? Are you going to remember me when the time comes? So, uh, when, when, I, when I couldn't find that inner peace, I asked Allah, please, I don't the hijab. Where, where is the peace that I want? So it came to me in an answer whereby I decided to move out of my bigger shop to go to a smaller shop. And Alhamdulillah, at the, at the new shop, I have so much time. Yes, my earnings is hard, but so is my rental. So is everything else. But what I gain a lot out of it is the time which I never had a chance when I was having a big shop back then. I'm forever trying to... People have this misconception that, oh, kita jangan kejar duit. But it's not a matter of earning money to get rich where, where I'm coming from. It's a, a matter of earning to remain, to remain sustainable. It's not we keep on earning money to get rich. It's more to sustain the business. But then I realized that Life is not all about business and all that. There's more to it than just that. So, when I shifted to my new place, I, I feel a calmness which I've never felt before. And the urge to right now, uh, looking forward to every prayer time instead of before. You know, so it's like the prayer time coming. And Alhamdulillah, I must thank my friend for it because she's forever messaging me saying, it's going to be Asar, it's going to be Zohor, it's going to be Maghrib. It, it, it's so fun, it's so fun. Kita bekerja, siapa nak solat dulu? So, it's, 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 it's a good feeling. So, my advice to people out there 
who's running your own business, who, who's forever working and you always feel that you fear, oh, because of my job, I can't I think again. Uh, when, when I say I, I lost half of, of whatever shock that I had, not really lost, I decided to make that hijrah. And it's so much better for me, but Allah gave me rizki in many other forms. Rizki in many other forms. Today I put on the hijab and uh, I uploaded a new picture of myself. Um, <laughs> I, I had 3,000 over likes for just that picture of the hijrah. I say, mashallah, when I was wearing the flowers, it was just a couple of hundreds. When I was with the hijab, it's 3,000 over likes. So, it's, it's not the likes that I want, but the message behind it. The message behind it is like, uh, never be afraid to make that change because uh, you'll, just, you'll just be amazed by Allah's power over it. And, and right now, when I, I so-called have lesser business opportunities here, my business opportunities overseas is way much more. Alhamdulillah. Are you standing questions from the floor? Well, I think you are both tested for uh, three things. Number one, wealth. Number two, knowledge. And number three, love. I think both of you have been tested through the number one. And of course, love is there. And now is your knowledge. So that's why you're here to share with us. And I think that if any one of you feel like asking any one of us here on stage that you're not comfortable, you can all stay behind and we will be able to assist you with some questions. Uh, to your questions, I mean, so we'll be able to Helps you to comprehend better. Is there anyone else who like to show any questions here? I just like to add in what is being said by Chef City. Now, in in, in in context of our society, what went wrong is that the approach to Islam is being done in a very um, I don't know who to blame. You know, we are not here to be learning about who to blame, but. Uh, if you want to be doing da'wah, if you want to be reaching out, just talk about the theology. Because Islam is a religion of love. The base is love. You talk about uh, Allah has done a lot of good things to you and this and that. Don't try to approach Islam from the legal aspect. That's what uh, Shati was saying earlier. That those are the challenges that you're going to, which is very true. You know? uh, in fact, every day, when my wife, uh, when I send my wife to work, I will always lecture her to tell her to, to remind her, keep on reminding her, when you're putting on the hijab, brought along with you the moral values. Which means that when you are with the non-hijab, be natural. Don't make them feel out of place. This is normally what happens in, in, in our society, and then, then we, we break into groups. It doesn't look nice, actually. The hijab will only go with the hijab for lunch. The non-hijab will hang out with the non-hijabs. This is uh, you, you should not. You should not. You should not create that kind of uh, because it is very disrespectful. And as mentioned again, uh, you cannot be judgmental because Allah knows what is in our heart. This is at some time uh, if you were talking about the call, the, the call would wouldn't come if you do not put on the effort. The effort comes, uh, the call comes with the effort. Remember? It's a Quran that Allah made, and, uh, and you can check this with all psychiatric of the world. You, know? you can check this with all psychiatric of the world. They will tell you no one can change anyone. Isn't it so? So that is in line with the Quran where Allah says in Allah, you will become in hatta, you will be unpossible. Clear. Allah said, I'm not going to change you if you do not make an effort. To make the change, we through as what Chef City was saying, it's a journey. It, it takes time. So that is the reason why, it, uh, as I said, the time doesn't permit for us to be. In fact, if you want to talk about fashion and beauty, discuss more of the moral values rather than the physical. There is a guideline given in the physical, as mentioned by Usaza already, pertaining to how you should dress, this and that. Uh, but the more important, the core of what to be addressed when you talk about fashion. It's the moral values, akhlaq, akhlaqul karima, because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also 
uh, has mentioned in the Quran, has mentioned, has quoted, uh, Ustaz has quoted a few of the verses of the Quran in the Hadith where he is the best example. If you want, if you want to do something, look up at Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Follow him. You do it because of you love him, not none others. Well, the approach of how you can attract, as what Siti has said, again said, uh, is good. It's good. You can use da'wah. Da'wah can be done in many forms. You know, da'wah bil mal, da'wah bil hal, da'wah bil kalam, you see? So now she's doing da'wah bil hijab. Uh, maybe a new form of da'wah. Uh, it's trying to reach out to the others. Uh, but the approach, as I always mentioned, you cannot, you cannot abruptly because if you read history, Rasulullah sallallahu most of this uh, legal aspect were revealed in Medina, not in Mecca. In Mecca, it's almost like you want, you will, if you want not to be wearing anything, because the, you need, you need to trace the culture of the Arabs. Uh, the Arabs, uh, they are very fond of nude. They like to be nude, especially when they are doing the ibadah, when they were uh, circumambulating the uh, Kaaba, they, they were all nude. So they, they, they are kind of imbued to that kind of life, you know. So when it comes, when the Prophet comes, he doesn't touch on that yet. So in other words, if you want to approach someone to come into Islam, talk to them about, Allah loves you. You are, you are nice, you are this, you are that. And this is how uh, you will definitely, inshallah, the person will be touched by what you say. But if you going to say, haram, halal, haram, halal, haram, halal, then they will say, salam alaikum. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think we have, uh, we need to come to an end of this. Uh, it was good to have shared the history, the modernity, the issues that we are facing in today's context, the challenges, and also the fact that we are tested in many ways. Um, as what Chef said, that sometimes what you want is not what's good for you. And that is found in the Surah of Baqarah. And the fact that love, um, God loves you, Allah loves you, and therefore you should be happy to be beautiful at all times. Because when you face the mirror, uh, you always ask God to beautify yourself, but don't forget to ask God to beautify your akhlaq as well. Alright, I think it's, um, it's timely that I call Sister Noor to close the event for the day. Thank you very much for your presence. And if you have any other questions, please come forward and uh, we'll try to uh, accede to your questions. Thank you very much. Jazakallah to Ustaz, Ustaza, and our two celebrity chefs, and also to Fariha. I hope you're all inspired by their stories. And uh, before the end, we'd like to give some tokens to um, Chef uh, City.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.